And this is the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead. And indeed, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. And you may be seated. Well, this is a wonderful morning. It's a beautiful day as we gather together on this Easter Sunday to remember the new life that comes because the tomb is empty. Jesus has been raised to new life. This is an incredible thing, and this is where our hope is founded on. Our hope is founded on the empty tomb, and it's wonderful to have all of you here and uh, wonderful to uh, have our musicians and the choir and Joe Marie Fike, our, our organist, and uh, Ryan Weilman as well from NDSU, Go Bison. So we're glad that you are here. Welcome to our community. You've done a wonderful job playing the trumpet, so thank you so much. So a wonderful day to be together, no doubt about it. This has also been a good Holy Week for me. I've been uh, looking at the texts of Holy Week in a new way. Uh, as I've talked about previously, I've been seeing a spiritual director, and it's been the most wonderful thing. He's been guiding my devotional life, and one of his suggestions for me in reading scripture is to allow yourself to get into the story, to allow yourself to get into each individual character, to kind of get into their brain, to really live the text. And so I've been really focusing in on that during these texts of Holy Week and to think about the events on Monday, Thursday, when Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment that they should love one another and how he washed the feet of the disciples. Just imagine for a moment, place yourself in that text. Imagine what that would have been like to have Jesus wash your feet, and then to celebrate in the Last Supper when Jesus instituted uh, Holy Communion on that night. But then there was this air of anxiety in the room as well, and Judas would betray Jesus. Just imagine what that would have been like to feel that anxiety that they felt. And then to go to the garden, and Jesus is there praying, and then Judas betrays Jesus, and is arrested and then is put on trial. Imagine for a moment, you're one of the disciples and you see this person, this savior that you've been following all those years, suddenly be arrested and taken away. I can only imagine that they started to despair, started to lose their hope, started to become depressed maybe. Just imagine what that would have been like and then the next day, Jesus is put to death on a cross. This man, Jesus, whom they saw heal people and care for people, is put to death on a cross. I can only imagine that all of their hope must have been lost at that point. They must have been lost, scared, alone, depressed. They must have been incredibly disoriented in a very disorienting time not really knowing which way is up or down. They were just utterly lost and disoriented. I can only imagine. But in the midst of that, that hope that isn't there, in the midst of that 
disoriented feeling on that Easter morning. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary go to the tomb, and the tomb is empty. Jesus has been raised from the dead. And just imagine the flood of emotions that they felt when they saw that the tomb is empty. And then the angel descends down and and tells them to not be afraid that Jesus has been raised and to go and tell the others. And then they go to tell the others, and then Jesus all of a sudden shows up. I love this part of the text. He just shows up, and he says, greetings. There he is. Just imagine all of a sudden, all of that despair, all of that pain, that disoriented feeling that they must have had vanish. And suddenly, they see the Savior has been, has been raised from the dead. It must have been an incredible experience. It must have been amazing. Easter happened. Easter happened and wiped away those disoriented feelings that they had. Jesus had been raised from the dead. This is good news, and this is where our hope lies. So I've been thinking a lot about that whole sense of feeling disoriented in those times in life where you feel like you don't have a lot of hope. And I'm willing to bet that many of you have had those times in life where you feel like you don't have a lot of hope, where you feel disoriented in your life. I've had those times in my own life. And I couldn't help but think about one time in particular when my wife and I moved to Brazil to go to seminary there. We were there for all of 2004, and we were in southern Brazil, um, just outside of a city called Porto Alegre. And I remember getting on the plane in Minneapolis to move down there. We started packing the night before at 11 o'clock, praying to God that, that we had all the stuff that we needed knowing we probably didn't pack everything we needed. But I was there on the plane thinking, what in the world am I doing going to this other country? I don't speak the language, um, and here we are. We're married. We've been married for about two years at that point, going down to be seminary students down in Brazil. It was a little crazy. So then we landed in Sao Paulo. We had a layover there. Actually, we flew from Minneapolis, Atlanta, Atlanta, Sao Paulo, and then Sao Paulo to Porto Alegre. And I remember the first feeling of being disoriented when I got off the plane. I got off the plane and I immediately felt disoriented when I saw a giant billboard on the wall at the airport. And it was a billboard for John Deere. I love John Deere tractors. And the tagline, right, for John Deere is what? Nothing runs like a deer, right? That's the tagline. Well, the tagline on this billboard said, A forza que alimenta o mundo. And I thought, what in the world? Even their John Deere is different. I immediately felt disoriented. I found out later that that tagline means uh, the force that feeds the world. John Deere, the force that feeds the world. That's where those feelings of disorientation started. And they just got worse over time. We were picked up by our uh, exchange director, Etor was his name, and he was just speaking Portuguese 100 miles an hour. My wife and I didn't speak a lick of Portuguese. We had no idea what he was talking about. It It was incredibly disorienting. And then he picked us up. We got into one of those Volkswagen buses, those mini buses, like the old school one. We got into that and put in our luggage. And he said, you sure don't have enough, you sure don't have a lot of luggage here. Did you pack enough? And I thought to myself, we probably didn't. So we get in the car. It's like 95 degrees. We left uh, Minneapolis. It was like five below. It's 95 in Brazil because it's summer, right? It's in the southern hemisphere. And we're driving down the road. It does not look like Minneapolis at all. It does not look like Chicago at all, uh, where we were going to seminary. We were not in Kansas anymore. So we're driving along, we make it to the seminary, he shows us our apartment, he takes us out to get some food. It was incredibly disorienting. Everything was hard. Buying food was hard. Talking to people was hard. And I made a lot of mistakes. For a week, I was telling people that I was very pregnant. (laughs) In Portuguese, I am pregnant is eu estou embarrassado. And I thought that meant I am embarrassed. 
But no, it's, I am pregnant. And people would just point and laugh at me. And there were a couple of times when I thought I was saying coconut, but I was actually swearing, and people would get really mad at me. Everything was hard. It was so challenging. The part that was really hard is whenever a man and a woman would greet one another who were friends, you had to kiss them. You had to kiss, air kiss on the right side, then go to the left side, and then go back to the right side. I like my space bubble. I don't want to do that. And they would make fun of me. It was so disorienting. And the language was the biggest challenge, trying to be able to communicate your sense, uh, your feelings and what you, what you wanted. And over time, we started to get depressed. And our hope, our hope started to wane. And we wondered, was this really worth it? Was this really worth it? It was so incredibly hard. But then, but then Easter happened. Easter happened in the midst of our hopelessness. Actually, Holy Week happened first. That's when everything started to change for us. I remember going to Monday Thursday at the seminary, and we washed each other's feet to remember how Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. We celebrated Holy Communion, and it was the most incredible thing because suddenly I started to understand some of the language, and I understood what was going on. And then the next day was Good Friday, and I remember we nailed our sins to the cross, and that was a really amazing experience to do that. And then the next day, on Holy Saturday, we had a campfire outside of the chapel, and then we did the coolest thing. We lit the Paschal candle, the Christ candle, from the campfire, and we paraded all throughout the campus. And we had a really out-of-tune guitar, the trumpet player was incredibly out of tune, and there was a trombone. We had a trombone, a trumpet, and a guitar, all of which were out of tune. And every last one of us, we all sang incredibly out of tune. We sounded terrible. But it was the most beautiful thing because I felt very out of tune through that whole experience, feeling hopeless and feeling disoriented. And I said, yes, this is what I feel like. I feel like I'm out of tune. And it was beautiful to have that realization as we rocked around campus singing out of tune. We did it for like an hour. And they actually sang all night out of tune as well. And then uh, we went to a, a worship service that night as well. We prayed for like three hours, heard scripture, uh, and, uh, sang songs, all sorts of things for our Easter vigil. And then that night I made cinnamon rolls. Cinnamon rolls always give me hope. And then the next day, we went to Easter services, early morning, about 6.30 in the morning, and we heard the good news of the gospel. We heard that the tomb is empty. We heard that Jesus has been raised to new life. And suddenly I started to have hope again, hope that we would make it through, to know that Jesus has been raised from the dead, to know that our futures have been secure, that my sins have been forgiven, I started to have hope again. Because you see, Easter came. Easter arrived into my life and gave me hope once again. It was a powerful experience. Later that day, we went to Easter brunch with Dorothy and Richard Vongen. And they were from the States. They're actually from Harvey, North Dakota. Have you all heard of Harvey? North Dakota, that's where, that's where they're from. And they invited us over for a traditional Easter brunch, and we had Brazilian food as well as some good hot dish. You can't beat that comfort food. And it was amazing to go from the Easter worship where we heard the good news of the gospel proclaimed to then sitting down and having a meal with the most amazing people and to be reminded that we don't face this world alone, that we've got each other the brothers and sisters of Christ. We are all the beloved brothers and sisters of Christ. We are each other's brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a remarkable thing. And for the first time in a few months, I allowed myself, I, I started to feel hope again, sitting at that table, reflecting on the good news of the gospel, good news of Easter, and just being together, gathering together and sharing in a meal. 
Whenever Easter comes around, I always remember that Easter that I spent in Brazil, where I was reminded that our hope comes from the empty tomb. You know, right now in our world, we're living in a time where we're experiencing, experiencing a lot of disorientation. The world is changing at a pace we have never seen before in our lives. It is changing at an exponential rate. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's anxiety everywhere you go. People are walking around stressed out beyond anything you can possibly imagine. People are overworked. People are feeling lost. People are feeling alone and scared. I've been a pastor. I'll be a, been a pastor now for 10 years coming up in July. That's hard to believe. But I've noticed, even in the last couple of years, just the, the level of intensity of things that people are dealing with has increased, it seems. That's just my anecdotal view of it. But we're going through a lot. There's no doubt about it. We're going through a time where we're feeling very disoriented, I think, in our world. But in the midst of that, that feeling disoriented, Easter comes. Easter arrives in the middle of that that sense of disorientation. Easter arrives and gives us hope. Easter arrives and reminds us that the tomb is empty, that, that Jesus has been raised from the dead. In the midst of this anxious world, that, that is where our hope lies. So it does not matter who you are, where you came from, whether you have $1,000, whether you have a $1 million, whether you have a $1 billion, or whether you have $1, your future is secure. Your sins are forgiven. Why? Because Easter happened. Easter happened. In this life of disorientation, your future is secure. Because Easter happened. Jesus is your rock because you see the tomb is empty. And because he lives, you live as well. Easter happened. Your future is secure. But Easter doesn't have to stop with just today. Easter can happen and does happen every day. When you feel disoriented, when you feel stressed, lost, scared, or alone, when you feel weighed down by your sin, come back to the good news of Easter, that the tomb is empty. Come back to the fact that you are a beloved, baptized child of God. The tomb is empty. Jesus lives because Easter happened. Your future is secure. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For Jesus has been raised from the dead. Feliz Pascua. Happy Easter. Amen.